If you use a podcast, video blog, or even a typed blog for the promotion of your copywriting business, then pay close attention. I'm going to share with you what I've learned in publishing more than 300 podcasts and kind of a philosophy for looking at this media to promote your consulting services. I'm Justin Hitt with Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips. I am the publisher of Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips, Prosperity Homestead, Inside Strategic Relations, Sustainable uh, Sustainable Wealth Secrets, and uh, over the years I've published other newsletters, podcasts, and such. I've published more than 300 episodes. There's four to 5,000 people a month listening to the publications. I have definitely made a bunch of mistakes and my podcasts are not super popular, uh, but I have learned a number of lessons because the podcasts themselves have helped me generate new high ticket sales. I like to share with you a few of the lessons learned so that you can get better with your prod podcast and you can also start promoting the podcast or the publication in such a way. So when I say podcast, I do mean any kind of periodic publication that's designed to promote your business. So one of the biggest mistakes people make is they do a podcast because they want to be an influencer, they want to be a celebrity, they want the attention that comes with being a popular person. Uh, that is not why I do a podcast. In fact, I don't really care if anybody notices the podcast, especially those people who are not qualified to do business with me. So first lesson I've learned in more than 300 podcasts is to focus your podcast on specific individuals who have a high probability or even a desire to become a client. Now, again, how do you know if somebody in the public has a desire to do business with you? Uh, well, they have a desire not for the podcast because really nobody needs your podcast. Uh, they actually want a specific solution or they want a, a specific desired outcome. So I know that copywriters and marketers who listen to this podcast, they want to grow their business more consistently. They want multiple streams of income so that if they can't work, that they ha still have some income coming in. They want to be able to scale the business so that they can bring on cub copywriters and folks who will help them uh, not only promote their business, but to grow the billable hours in the business. And then they also want to stop trading hours for dollars by having some other means of residual income. That is lessons learned from years of study, years of, of experience that helps me create materials that are specific for somebody. Because again, nobody really cares that I did 300 podcasts. Um, but that one person who goes through and listens to past episodes, who asks questions, who really wants to move forward, they are more likely to become a client. Now here's something to understand is that those solutions are not going to be able to deliver in a 15 minute podcast or even an hour long podcast. There is something that you do for your clients that the client is interested in and they want to learn how to to get involved or find that solution. But if you go over step by step on how to get that solution, it's just not going to it's it, it, it took really when you sit down with a client, it can take months to solve a problem, but you've got to give them a taste. Otherwise, they won't know that you can help them solve the problem. So again, just because you record a podcast doesn't mean anybody wants to listen to it. You could create very valuable content for a specific audience, but it doesn't mean that they're going to find it. So you really have to market. You have to market your podcast. You have to market your publication. Now, again, I have a report about writing special reports and how we use these reports to generate a high ticket sales a podcast would be introducing the report. So I could introduce the five reasons why you want to write a special report. And I could give you that in five episodes of a podcast. And then when you raise at the end, you want to raise, get them to raise their hand and actually request the report or request additional information. And then that's when you start the sales engagement. So your podcast is really about the promotion of the reason why a prospect might get involved with a high ticket service, but it's not the solution that's delivered in the high ticket service. So how do we do this? Well, each episode needs to be one specific topic because again, in this media, you can do an episode every month, episode every week, an episode every day. Um, 
but each episode needs to be one specific topic that speaks specifically to one particular type of prospect. And then you have to have some kind of lead generation engagement on the end. Now, the, the common lead generation engagement that I use is allowing people to ask questions because I don't have a lot of extra time. I don't know if you've noticed, but there are very uh, abundant publication of podcasts for individuals who have a lot of free time. It can take for every minute of finished content. It could be five to ten minutes of preparation, recording, uh, promotion, uh, and then that only increases over time because you're going to have these analytics that's going to help you know which episodes are more valuable than others. You can add topic testing, for example. You can do five episodes on uh, five different topics or five different prospects of the same problem, and then you can test those. Uh, this is what goes on behind the scenes. Now, if I wanted to have 10,000 listeners to my podcast every month, I need a topic that appeals to 10,000 listeners. I'm speaking to, in, in this particular podcast, to copywriters who are already in the business of copywriting. They already know how to co do copy. They've written copy for people before. They have a desire to grow that business. They've already tasted that five-figure check that comes with a copywriting assignment that you know sometimes takes less than a month. Um, ultimately, it's a different kind of person than selling you the dream of becoming a copywriter or becoming a marketer. So again, the size of your audience is not as important as the lead flow and the quality of the customers that you're achieving through the medium. Now, here's something that's important. I said earlier, just because you recorded it doesn't mean they're, they will listen. And just because you record it in audio, just because you record it in video, just because you type it up, doesn't mean that they that's the preferred medium for your customers. So in some environments, the audio will go wonderful. It'll be great. People listen to it in the car. They listen to it between appointments. They're going to love it. But in other cases, they want to watch you. They want to see what you look like. They want to see how you present things. Uh, some topics may require diagrams. Some topics may re require demonstration. And in other cases, they're willing to read what you're uh, talking about. Now, you and I know that you can take a single topic and view it from different perspectives. This is what the podcast allows you to do. I can say, hey, look, a podcast is a great, great way to create high ticket services and in you can do a series of podcasts that come together as an audio program. You can have it transcribed, and now you have a special report that goes with the audio program. And then you can offer that as a precursor to your high-ticket sale. See, I can cover it at that high level in a podcast, but I can also cover it at deep detail. I can show somebody what it looks like to do an editorial calendar. I can show somebody what it looks like to do a outline and give them an example of an outline. I can show them what equipment to use. Now, there's a distraction here that happens very often in the general world of podcasting. There is that, how do I get a sponsor? How do I get advertisers? How do I offer affiliate product? That's not what I'm talking about here. I've created more than 300 episodes that are specifically designed to get that next action, which is to ask a question so that I, again, have more topics to do podcasts on, but also because the people who ask the questions tend to be highly qualified to do business. I even had somebody call through with the podcast. We did a consultation. Um, they had a problem where they had a million dollars in cash. Like that, they did a certain type of work. They had a problem of a million dollars in cash. They didn't know what to do with it. And they wanted to buy a business with it. And we talked about that particular thing. Now, I wasn't willing for the, to... They really wanted to buy a business. I wasn't willing to coach them into buying a business. Um, I personally told them to put the money aside and use the interest off that money to document the system that got them the million dollars and then go get the million dollars again. And that way, now you have $2 million. Now you have a bigger problem because you have $2 million of cash. You're not sure what you want to do with. But you might have $80,000 in residual that can fund your overall marketing campaigns to turn it into $4 million, turn it into $16 million, turn it into $32 million. Uh, do you see what I'm, I'm saying here is that I set up a podcast that got them to raise their hand. 
I got them into a consultation, but they weren't suited for the types of so solutions that I can deliver or that I would want to deliver in this case, because obviously I don't want somebody to make a million dollars and then spend the whole million dollars on buying a business that they were not uh, closely aligned to. I'd rather see them reinvest that into growing or scaling what they're already doing. Long story short is I, that same podcast got heard by a couple thousand people. It screened down to one person who raised their hand and called. While it didn't get me an assignment, which is fine, um, there were other people who came through there and became customers so or clients. Um, it isn't about getting everybody converted. It's about sifting and sorting and really putting up a little bit of a barrier so that your phone isn't ringing off the hook. And I know you guys dream about the phone ringing off the hook, but you don't want people calling you to tick kick tires. Before I did the podcast, I used to get hundreds of phone calls and emails and everybody asking questions. And I thought, oh my gosh, I am so important. I am solving problems for people. And I'm, I'm such a, you know, I was doing webinars and oh my gosh, not a single client assignment. And eventually what I did is I, I got some client assignments through other means, usually uh, like magnetic marketing campaigns, um, using uh, the prospect newsletter. And then I adapted my podcast to be a lead generation tool of qualified prospects. And then I started getting better clients, but the volume of calls went down. So if you're excited about the number of listeners you have on a podcast, if you're excited by the number of questions that come in from your podcast, if you're excited about, you know, getting invited to speak, I've been invited to speak to place, you know, they only pay like $200, $300 for you to, to go speak somewhere. They do cover all your expenses and it does lead to additional assignments, but it's not the big dollars. It's not consistent. It's not large, big chunks. If you do your podcast in a way that is generating quality leads, it needs to be a specific type of podcast. It needs to be educational, maybe a little bit entertaining, but it needs to be single topic, focusing on what's the next step. So in this particular podcast, I'm, I'm giving you a little behind the scenes, and that's dangerous at times, but I'm showing you the mistakes that I've made, the lessons I've learned, and then at the end, I can offer to ask questions. The typical question that I'm setting up is, you know, how do I plan my podcast? Or... How can I reuse my podcast? The reuse the podcast ties into my special report, Recycle Your Marketing. And then how do I set up my podcast or how do I efficiently do a podcast sets up my collaborative editing or my, uh, my media planning type of services. And so what we're doing here is we're educating the listener in the podcast. You've got to do that. We're trying to make it interesting for them because they do have other choices, but ultimately they've got to leave the podcast with a solution that gets them a step closer to the long-term results that they want. And uh, in between, they have an opportunity to get you involved. So in this case, I'm telling you, look, audio and video quality doesn't matter. It's the least of your concerns. You want high value content that speaks to a specific buyer not just the general audience. If you want to get a general audience podcast and you want the number of views, then you're going to interview famous people. Then you're going to you know, have a lot of gimmicks involved. I would rather see not a boring podcast, which some of mine are very boring. Um, I want to see that you can take a concept or idea. So right now, if you're doing a podcast, I want you to think about this. Who is the audience for your podcast? And are you reaching that audience? So instead of worrying about how many downloads, I want to look at the composition of subscribers. Now, how do you know what the comp composition of subscribers are? Well, you're going to have to go into the ad networks. You're going to have to go into analytics. And you're going to have to look at the people who are subscribing. And you want subscribers. You don't want listeners as much. So you want to see how many people listened how many people subscribe? Do some episodes get more subscribers than others? If one, if you're doing a topic testing or you're doing a decision matrix, you're going to look at the, the conversion rate for subscribers. You're going to look at the conversion rate for leads. And then if you do have sales numbers, you can look at the conversion for sales. But you want some, you want topics that create the maximum number of subscribers who become customers. So your analytics around that is more important than 
oh my gosh, this episode got a got a huge. This one went viral. It doesn't really matter. Number two is you're going to look at your podcasts that are successful in the measurements that we just described, and then you're going to syndicate them. So you don't need to create new content. I have made the mistake of creating new content in volumes of content when essentially there are only a few topics that have high traction. Now those topics generated a secondary question, which again, the, se the asking of a question becomes a lead. I answer that question, which is my engagement with that lead to take them to the next step. Some of that engagement becomes a public podcast uh, because I'm building a library of materials because the typical customer has listened to five or 10 uh, episodes, not just one episode and, and became a customer. Um, so again, what can you do to take a podcast, have it transcribed, turn it to a special report? You could take two or three podcasts, turn them into uh, uh, lessons inside of a larger tutorial. There is a little bit of information marketing here or creation of intellectual property, but this packaging allows you to offer something of value. So let's say I'm doing a podcast. Actually, this podcast is in a series of how to produce your podcast. I can say, look, uh, you've liked this this lessons learned of my more than 300 podcasts. And if you want more information, then you go to this website and you opt in and we're going to give you a free tutorial. See, the podcast becomes lead generation. So you also want to go back to your podcast and look at the description. Look at the marketing. Look at the promotion. You want to uh, set up some means to get an opt-in. Now, I'm going to give you one more example before I wrap it up here. Um, if you have a very good podcast, maybe it's a long-form podcast, 45 minutes to an hour, you can actually put an opt-in in front of that and then promote the opt-in on the ad networks specifically to the target audience that you want. And now somebody will come opt-in and then get that particular podcast. Now, once they've opted into your list, you can send them links to the other podcasts or you can send them links to specific topics related to what they opted in for. But even though the podcasts tend to be available for free, it could be on your YouTube channel, it could be on a podcast network, um, even though it's available for free, there's nothing wrong with setting up an opt-in before they get the podcast episode. But again, it's got to be specific to the audience. It must be lead generation. It must be appropriate to the, uh, the knowledge level of the prospect. It needs to educate them so that they know that the high ticket solutions are of value. A lot of folks that listen to this podcast are students or, and they're, they're permanent students. They're never going to put up a dollar even to get a tutorial that gives them more information about something they're interested in because they believe they can get free information on the internet. They're just going to keep searching on the internet. There's a, a, a large percentage of people who, who just listen to the podcast. I guess they like my voice or something. Um, but there's a tiny, tiny percentage, the tiny percentage that I care about, the three to 5% that is listening because they have a problem they want to solve. So if you've been producing podcasts for years and you don't have the audience that you want, you don't have the leads coming in that you want, you don't have the attribution to know that the podcast is contributing to your overall sales funnel, and you do periodically get customers from any means, then you call and ask a question. You visit www.adbriefings.co.uk. Go to the contact page, ask your question. I may not be the right person for you, but I will use your question to produce another episode of the podcast. I'll make sure that I get you the information and materials that you need to get started. And then ultimately, if we are a match, we'll do a paid consultation and we'll talk about your podcast, periodical newsletter, uh, blog post, whatever it is that you're using, and I believe they all work together. Um, how do you get more clients? That's really what it's about. I would not be podcasting for the last, I think, eight to 10 years, maybe longer than that. I've podcasts to go back to 1996. In fact, I've got a, a bunch of unpublished episodes that we're going through to put online because um, basically they got published on a podcast network. I think I was on Libsyn and I moved over to Spreaker. Everything that was on the other platform did not migrate. And so there are more than 300 episodes out there that are ready to recycle. And as long as they produce clients, then I'll do this forever. And in fact, that's why I can answer your questions for free. I got a full, I got full time work. I got a full billable schedule. I've got private clients. I can answer your questions for free because I only answer them one time. 
And again, if somebody asks a question that I've already answered, I can point them to the appropriate podcast. I can put them on a little opt-in. I can get them that drip campaign that sets them up to be a client in the future. That's really what the podcast is about. You're never going to be famous. You're going to be the famous guy that nobody knows. So if you go to a trade show for your industry, everybody will know you. You'll be famous. You'll be the podcast person that, or the person that they listen to. But if you go to a general airport, nobody's going to recognize you. Uh, that's okay. Um, but that happens systematically. It doesn't happen just because you've recorded episodes. Now, have I recorded episodes just because it was a topic I'm interested in? Yes, I have. I've recorded episodes on a whim. I've recorded episodes sitting at the airport because I was bored. Um, but again, I'm practicing to speak more clearly. I'm practice. I'm building my own skills. And then I'm also topic testing on the back end, which is an advanced thing we can talk about. I know I've covered it in, in linked before, but I'm also looking at, does that wild idea topic pick up some traction, which is again, subscribers, leads generated and sales, not in that order. Sales is most important, but often you can't track the sale until you opt, you tag somebody with an opt-in. And I get results from some of these side conversations. If I'm talking with somebody and um, we're at a trade show or something, and I've written down a list of questions and we had a conversation, I might do a episode specifically for the person I talked with and send it to that individual and say, hey, great, you know, it was great to meet you at the GKIC event. And uh, we talked about such and such. But there's this other topic that I think is important. Uh, I want to get your opinion on it. I did a podcast. And I send it to them. Uh, if you have the right platforms, if you have the right tools, you can tell that they listen to the whole podcast. Um, you know, often they'll just contact you and tell you because you created it just for them. But again, now that podcast is out there for a thousand more people to view it or 500 more people to view it. That's the power of the podcast because it becomes intellectual property. It becomes something that can repeat and it becomes a feeder for that residual income that you desire as a copywriter or marketer. So I know I've covered a lot here today. If you have questions, you can visit www.adbriefings.co.uk slash contact and ask your questions. I'll be more than happy to answer them. I've just given you all the behind the scenes and why I even bother with the podcasting. Hundreds and hundreds of hours of speaking. But again, it's to improve my skills. It's to improve my connection with a specific audience. It's to generate leads and to provide a tool that stimulates the sale of high ticket products and services. This is self-funded. There's no affiliate revenues in here. There's no advertisers. Um, some of the syndicated stuff might have advertising on it, but ultimately this is about you as the subscriber and how I can serve you better, how I can help you make better decisions about purchasing the solutions that I have available. I know that was super transparent, might even be creepy to some people, but that is really what you've got to be doing. I want to thank you for being a part of this episode and future episodes. Be sure to like and subscribe. Be sure to write in with your questions and get on one of my mailing lists so that we can get you what you need to produce more revenue, to grow your marketing business, even produce an agency and to generate that residual income that's going to help you stop trading hours for dollars and get more of what you're looking for in life. I'll see you in the next episode. I'm Justin Hitt from Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips.